Hey, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video and today we are going to be flying the Starship and before you say, oh, not Starship again, look closely. This one has been modified compared to my previous Starship video. I added booster flaps and made the aft section look more to part with what real life version should look like after it is finished. Our first launch is actually a Starship tanker that contains necessary fuel. This mission also provides a twist at the end, but you probably have a good understanding of what that is based on thumbnail and the title. In today's adventures we will witness two spacecraft launch to low Kerbin orbit first, then the second one shall be refueled, one will sadly end up deorbiting and burning up in the atmosphere, the other however will carry our carbonauts to Duna. But before that happens, let's talk about what's going on on screen, like the cargo glitching and showing outside the cargo bay. Uh, we're approaching Miko and first stage separation and there we go and boost back to KSC, meanwhile our starship proceeds to orbit. Of course I couldn't fly both craft at the same time, it's just magic of editing for you and I hope you enjoy that concept. Now I run into certain problems getting the ship to orbit, as you see the orbital line is a bit finicky and doesn't want to cooperate essentially. That meant I had to manually fly the spacecraft throughout the whole journey to orbit. We will get back to orbital line shortly though. At the same time our booster is nearing its landing spot. I've tried to get it to land on the launch pad but it's still more like a potato coming from space so I settled for near pad touchdown, a touchdown that literally made us jump, lol. It is almost on the ground by now. There we go, the booster just needs to calm itself down at that. I think that happens due to the landing gear being extremely soft. Let's just get it somewhat stable and recover the vessel before it tips over and I'd have to redo the whole boost back. Nothing happened. <laughs> that brings us closer to meat and potatoes of this whole mission project. This amazing shot shows you the great visuals along with our ship that awaits its companion, the crude starship, launch of which you can see on your screens right now. It is a bit more simple flight as we're not showing the first stage boost back again since you know that it works. Ahead is the orbital maneuvering and loads of really small corrections as I aimed for the closest possible intersect. Rendezvous is mostly standard but we're going to wait a bit longer in orbit than I'd like due to tight orbits of both craft. Now that I run out of things to say, how was or is your day? Mine just started, it's almost 6am, I got up 2 hours ago and decided to do this commentary and get the video out for you. Today I'm supposed to pick up my new RAM for the PC as the current one doesn't cut it anymore. I also need to get my internship in check and sort it out or at least get the process going. Soon though I'm going on a long walk, last time I went on one I've walked over 15 kilometers in under 2 hours. This resulted in blisters on my right foot but I felt happier and slept like a baby. I live in an area with loads and loads of lakes and forests surrounding one of the biggest cities. It boggles me how quickly it gets really peaceful that close to a city and I honestly hope it stays that way. I'm pretty sure though there will be no swimming in a lake today because the temperature is below freezing and last time I checked it was snowing. In temperate climate zone in March. I don't get sick easily, but when I do get sick, I just turn into a couch potato for a week and sometimes can't even talk. Last summer in 2022, I visited one of the lakes, even brought my mom and my dog along. The shore was a bit nasty and so was the bottom of the lake, like there was a two feet deep layer of dark brown weeds growing my legs each time I wanted to rest from swimming. It was still a decent experience and I even got to admire a new police boat, really quiet one as well. Don't know if it's just me, but I enjoy watching cool police equipment being really old or very new. As for what is going on in KSP, you can see me struggling with maneuver nodes, but when I get it somewhat right, the Apogee just jumps to like 200 km for no apparent reason. We end up stretching said Apogee way too much, almost 180k above Kerbin, and that meant I had to do certain corrections. First to get into orbit at all, and then bring the apogee down. Such a situation does not bother me at all because I know the tanker has way more fuel than I'm gonna need or can even fit inside the crewed starship tanks. After trial and error we have managed to get to a lower, more circular orbit and slowly but surely we're heading for the final burn that should bring us close to our tanker. Before that though we needed to time warp around so that we could catch up to the target ship and place ourselves behind it and perform a Hoffman transfer, albeit tiny. Let's get the separation distance as low as possible and have that room for mistakes. Mostly in-game mistakes as most readouts during this mission turned out to be inaccurate like required delta V 
or how much delta V we actually have. We managed to rendezvous with our long-awaited tanker starship and now I want to get to the sunny side of Kerbin where you will be able to see way more during docking. It was not easy to dock these two ships as maneuverability is really low and docking ports are not in line with the ship controls. I gave up after 20 minutes and at last docked when I got home later that day but decided to not record as even looking at that docking would have made you scream. Me showing you the beginning of my docking attempts serves as proof that you can steer these ships toward one another and that it is possible to get them to mate mainly by using the method where you switch controls on both ships to desired docking ports and set a corresponding port on the other ship as your target and then point the nav ball onto target using SAS. Using RCS however is not advised as it will cause the ship's rotation and ultimately may increase the separation making it impossible to dock. Now we have skipped across to the part where ships finally docked and are being refueled. I had to dock them manually though. I mean I've locked the tanker ship to fo always follow the targeted docking port but maneuver the crew ship using RCS thrusters and lots of camera moving. Time lapse of that would have been hard to watch, honestly. With the starship that contains our crew being fully fueled, we can double check our fuel tanks just to be sure we have every single drop that we can get, just in case. When that checklist is done, it is time to undock the two and start plotting the launch window soon. First try doesn't go according to plan and that stresses how important quick saving, especially in KSP2 is. Ships disintegrate and it is F9 time. The second go proves to be the one and soon enough both craft are able to continue with the mission. Getting the transfer window to Duna is simple, it is around 45 degrees. We can start plotting our encounter by creating a maneuver node roughly around perigee. For some reason the game decided to bless me with an interplanetary orbital line allowing me to get a fairly close and planned encounter. Now begins our escape burn rising our apoapsis enough to get us out of the sphere of influence of Kerbin and into interplanetary space. After playing with maneuver nodes for literally 20 minutes I managed to get the mid course correction burn somewhat right. We are aiming for around 30 km periapsis around Duna. At first the plan was to simply aero capture, kind of abusing the fact there is no re-entry or entry hitting in the game yet. However, I managed to get a really nice way of capturing around Duna by using Ike's massive gravity well that would slingshot us around the planet basically for free, also allowing us near free trajectory through thick parts of Duna atmosphere, resulting in aero capture. That will also prove useful when it comes to deorbiting. There you can see me playing with the nodes and waiting for the spacecraft to arrive at a desired position in order to start the burn. It's worth to mention this is not a tutorial on interplanetary travel in Kerbal Space Program 2 and it should not be treated as such. Now that we have entered Duna's sphere of influence, we should start planning and fine-tuning our capture burn that will get us into orbit around Ike. It is a fairly massive burn but we got more than enough fuel to do as we please basically. It is not the easiest to get the line spot on, this is a fairly complicated maneuver that requires a bit more calculations than a standard capture. I presume the game isn't as accurate as it should be and I may not be the best at it yet. Still learning, always learning, right? Since we got that out of the way and our final line is nearly done, we can skip further ahead to one of the most beautiful shots I've ever taken in KSP Ball Oil Means. This is our approach to the Duna Ike system and since we are slingshotting around Ike anyway, I plan a little surprise for all of you great folks watching this video this far, which you can see now that's an Ike fly by really close to the surface. Please enjoy. We are leaving Ike behind as quickly as we arrived and onwards to Duna. I kind of went a little too far lowering our periapsis burning retrograde and needed to perform a prograde burn to get us higher into the atmosphere instead of crashing into the sands of Duna. We went with desired 30 km periapsis by burning with RCS this time and began our deceleration using aero capture method which you can see now playing at 8 times speed as to not bore you to death. 
I'm trying to keep this video and the rest of them too as short as it is possible, but still showing the mission in detail. Please let me know down in the comments below whether you'd enjoy a longer format or if such a condensed package is the way for you. Now let's skip ahead to me playing with the parachutes on entry, <laughs> which is usually not a good idea. Nevertheless, we did get them to work as drug shoots at first to slow us down, greatly reducing our fuel expenditure, and they didn't break. It wasn't the easiest thing to control in Duna's thin atmosphere, so I needed to waste some fuel from time to time to get the ship's orientation to stay the way I wanted. I have to admit, the surface, at least from distance, looks really, really good. That makes it even more worthwhile spending countless hours on just getting technology to work, planning, filming. I am curious, though, if it is that good up close, and we are about to find out. I suppose now is good time as any to say what the purpose of this ship and this mission actually is. More experienced KSP players will have noticed that we do not have enough Delta V to get us back to Kerbin, but ha ha ha, that wasn't the plan. This starship will serve as our Duna Colony slash base startup with future missions to come. And that was definitely the plan all along, I 100% didn't miscalculate our fuel. We are now performing our first landing on Duna's surface, but soon enough you'll see why the second try was necessary. Approaching the surface, Touchdown engines off. The landing gear isn't as stable as I imagined and the ship started tipping. That brings us to our second try which was like my fifth landing in reality and this time our parachutes are invisible. They're there but we just can't see them. I'm glad they still worked though. I wanted this try to be the perfect landing and it somewhat was. When we started tipping over again, I quickly retracted our landing gear and that seemed to do the trick. Let me save our game and deploy our ladders and get Jeb on EVA. Uh, I should address the elephant in the starship. We had to jump around the nose cone if we wanted to stay legit and get to the ladders because I forgot to put any anchor points around the ship. Sorry Jeb. It proved to be fairly simple and soon enough Jeb is climbing down to be the first to put his feet on Duna. Here he is, walking this world alone. The adventure has come to an end and it is time to plant our flag, name our future base site and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and if you did, leave a like, if not, a dislike and see you in the future missions.